Hi, welcome to Movie Short Flicks. Today I'm going to explain to you the film called The Girl in the Basement. Warning, spoiler ahead. Anyway, enjoy watching. In the middle of the night, Sarah and her father, Don, rush Marie to the hospital. Marie sits at the back of the car as she struggles to breathe while Sarah holds her. All of a sudden, Marie stops breathing, and Sarah immediately demands her father to drive faster. Once they reach the hospital, Don carries Marie and tells Sarah not to say a word to anyone before finally going inside. The doctors and nurses take Marie away, while Sarah and Don are left in the corridor to wait. 20 years ago, during a family dinner, Sarah Cody tells her father that she's going to be late for a party. This takes Don aback since he didn't know that Sarah had plans to go to a party, so he asks his wife, Irene, about this. Irene says she was going to tell him but didn't get around to it. Sarah assures him that it's no big deal since it's only a party, but her father disagrees, asserting the big deal is her attitude. He grabs Sarah's hand and forces her to sit while she turns to her mother, claiming that she already allowed her weeks ago. However, Irene could only apologetically tell Sarah to listen to her father. Sarah's sister Amy offers to take her to the party, but Don tells her to stay out of it. He forbids his daughter from going to the party before demanding her to stay in her room. As soon as everyone is asleep, Sarah sneaks out of the house and meets her boyfriend, Chris, who is waiting for her outside. The two leave on Chris's motorcycle while back at home, Irene knocks on Sarah's door, asking her daughter to talk to her. As Irene continues to knock, Don gets mad and starts banging on the door, demanding her to open it. Irene tries to reason that Sarah probably just wants some time alone, but he ignores her and unlocks the door, anyway. Inside, they find Sarah's bed empty and the window open. Disappointed, Don says Sarah is a problem before leaving the room. At the outdoor party, Sarah and Chris are having a good time dancing. Meanwhile, Don is fuming at home, looking out the window now and then to check if Sarah is back. Chris then takes Sarah away from the crowd to a quieter spot. As they sit on the grass, Chris sings his girlfriend a song before finally telling her that he loves her, to which she responds that she loves him, too. Sarah goes home the following morning, and as Don waits for her by the porch, he sees Sarah kissing Chris before saying goodbye to each other. He then watches his daughter walk to the house but not toward the front door. Don calls her attention, telling her to come in the front door like a normal person, adding that she can't make up her own rules. Ignoring her father, Sarah tries to walk past him, but Don blocks her path, saying that they're not done yet. Don asks her if Chris is her boyfriend, but Sarah curtly tells him that it's none of his business. When Don asks her if they've given her permission to date motorcycle boys, Sarah gets pissed and promises her father that she'll be out of their house once she turns 18 and then that they won't see her again. Feeling disrespected, Don gently pins Sarah against the door, reminding her that when she's in his house, she has to follow his rules. Sarah tells her father to get off her, and just in time, her mother comes down from the stairs to ask them what's going on. Sarah breaks free from her father's grasp, and as she goes upstairs and past her mother, she tells Irene that her father is crazy. While in bed, Amy talks to Sarah about her sneaking out and hopes that it was worth it. Sarah says it was, adding that Chris said he loved her. They giggle like little girls, and Amy reminds her that she'll be out of their house in no time. She just needs to keep her head down and be cool. In a hushed voice, Sarah says somebody needs to stand up to Don. She calls him crazy and complains that her mother is just letting him walk all over her. Despite what Sarah just said, Amy warns her not to mess with him. Then, Sarah's mother enters her room to let her know that she's grounded for a week. Annoyed, Sarah swears again that she's leaving as soon as she turns 18. Meanwhile, her father stands outside her door, listening to their conversation. When asked if she has a plan, Sarah says she intends to travel the world and start in Florida, getting jobs that will help her work her way across the country. Her mother supports her, but she also reminds Sarah not to be reckless. Unhappy with what he just heard, Don goes down to the basement and sits down to think. Then, he walks up to the bookshelf and starts pushing it, revealing a door to a secret room. Three months later, after Sarah has graduated, she talks to Chris on the phone about her plans. When Irene asks her where her father is, she says he's out front. Her mother says that it's good for him and that she's worried that he's been spending too much time in the basement lately. Irene then leaves, and when he's sure his wife is gone, Don tells Sarah to hang up the phone and help him with something. Sarah apologizes to Chris and hangs up before assisting her father with carrying a big box down the basement. Down there, Don pushes the bookshelf aside, and Sarah is surprised to see the secret room. She asks him what that room is for, and Don explains that the previous owner has built the bomb shelter, and he later added some improvements. After bringing the box inside the bomb shelter, Don asks his daughter what she thinks of it. She says it's not nice since there are no windows, and Don only tells her that's too bad before locking her inside. Sarah bangs the door and yells, pleading with her father to let her out, but Don ignores her and leaves. Scared, Sarah takes a look around the room, which only has a sink and a shower head. Sarah opens the box they carried and finds her clothes and other belongings inside. Once again, she tries calling for help while her father pushes the bookshelf back to its place, hiding the secret door. After failing to guess the door's security code three times, the lights go out, and Sarah's left to use the flashlight inside her box. She tries looking for anything that might be useful to her, and she ends up spotting the vent. Sarah goes near it, screaming for her mother, but Don is already on the other side of the vent. He covers it to make sure that no one will hear her. Finally satisfied, Don goes back upstairs. As darkness falls, Irene gets worried since Sarah isn't home yet. 
Amy says that Sarah is probably just at her friend's house, but Irene is still worried and says she'll call the cops. Don then tells her that Sarah will probably be home the following morning, but his wife is determined to call the police. As she leaves the room, Irene instructs Amy to contact Chris while Don sits there, pretending not to know anything. Days pass, and Sarah remains in the bomb shelter. With nothing else to do, she either paces around the room or tries unlocking the door's code until the lights go out. On the fourth day, her father finally decides to visit her, so Sarah hides behind a pillar. As soon as he gets inside, she pushes him out of the way and gets out of the door, only to be trapped outside the second door. She screams for her mother, but her father tells her that no matter how loud she screams, no one will hear her. Don then grabs Sarah by the hair and drags her back inside the bomb shelter. She's adamant that he can't do this to her, adding that there's no air so she can't breathe. Don explains that as long as there's power, there's air. Three failed attempts on the keypad will shut the power off, including the ventilation system. When he reveals that he changes the code every day, Sarah steps back away from him, asking why he's doing this to her. Don only tells her that this is the consequence of her being disrespectful and that everything she gets, she will earn. He asks her if she understands him, and when Sarah doesn't answer, he slaps her and pins her to the door before forcing himself on her. Outside the door, Don watches his daughter slowly get up from the floor, only to throw up. With that, he takes his leave. Irene talks to a cop and tells him that it's unlike her daughter just to run off. The cop says that since Sarah is already 18, she can come and go as she pleases. He then asks Sarah's parents if she might just be staying at a friend's house, and Irene tearfully replies that she doesn't have many friends. The officer asks if she's got a boyfriend, and Amy tells him that Chris hasn't seen Sarah, either. Wanting to know who Chris is, the officer asks for his number, and Amy leaves the room to get it. After a few more questions, Don tells the officer that Sarah's bag and some of her clothes are missing. He also asks Irene if she mentioned Sarah's plan to the officer, so Irene tells the officer about her daughter's plan to travel, starting from Florida. Sobbing, Irene insists that Sarah wouldn't leave without saying goodbye to her and that she hasn't even had her birthday yet. The officer then informs them that they've already filed a missing persons report, but since they have no leads, that's all he can do at that point. In the bomb shelter, Sarah gets more frustrated as days pass. Demoralized, Sarah could only think of her boyfriend and their plan to go to Florida. One day, while Don is mowing the lawn, Chris shows up at their house looking for Sarah, saying the cops called him, and that he has something for her. Don makes up a story about Sarah running off with a guy named Steve. He explains that Sarah and Steve are childhood friends and that she's always talked about running off with him as soon as she graduates. Don says that according to his wife, the two are in Florida, and Sarah is working as a waitress. Upset, Chris prepares to leave, and as he does, Don pretends to sympathize with him. On her 21st day in captivity, Don brings Sarah a foldable chair and a small cake for her 18th birthday. He gives Sarah a red dress and asks her to put it on. Once she's done, Don tells her to pick something she wants, and when she says she wants to get out, he tells her that it's too early for that. When she asks for television, he says she needs to earn that, so Sarah asks for a clock instead, and he agrees. He then tells Sarah to come near him, and when she calls him dad, he instructs her to call him Don. Sarah walks toward her father, and later on, she gets a clock. On the 38th day, she receives some canned goods, and this gives her the idea of making a weapon out of the small tin can. When her father arrives, Sarah is already in her red dress, and with a makeshift weapon in her hand behind her back, she tries attacking her father. But Don is too quick, and he disarms her with ease. He throws Sarah against the wall, and as she hits the floor, Don brutally steps on her arm. The sick and twisted man forces himself on Sarah once more, under the guise of teaching her a lesson. A year has gone by, and Don gets Sarah pregnant. As she cleans one day, her water suddenly breaks, and with the help of the pregnancy book she has, Sarah gives birth to her first child, alone. She calls her child Marie, and when Don learns that Sarah has already given birth, he tells her that motherhood will provide her with a sense of purpose. Marie stays with Sarah in the basement, and in her fourth year in captivity, Sarah gets pregnant again. Worried about having another baby, Sarah tries to ask Don if he can finally let them out, but he only gets furious with her. Pissed, Don leaves and joins Irene and Amy upstairs for dinner. Amy congratulates her father for his recent promotion, and when Irene asks if they could hire a private investigator since Don is getting a raise, he tells her no. Don says Irene has already spent $5,000 by going to Florida to find Sarah, and they're not going to waste any more money. Irene says she'll never stop searching for her daughter, not caring how much it costs them. This upsets Don, saying they have another daughter as he points to Amy. That night, Don brings Sarah and Maria television as a Christmas present. In her seventh year in captivity, when Sarah has already given birth to their second child, Sarah asks Don to bring some medicine for Marie. However, Don gives the kind that is for adults, upsetting her. She tells Don that they're the wrong kind and that they could poison her daughter. Unbothered, Don tells her that she and Amy got sick all the time, but their mother managed to handle it. He adds that since she's the mother now, she needs to take care of it. Sarah insists that Marie needs a doctor, but Don ignores her and leaves. To put Marie to sleep, Sarah tells her a story and sings her the song Chris has made for her. One day, Chris visits Sarah's house, hoping to hear anything from her. He sees Amy, who's staying at her parents' house for the weekend, and asks if there's any news about Sarah. When she replies that they still haven't heard from her, Chris mentions Steve, which confuses Amy. Chris tells her that her father has told him about Steve and Sarah, 
which only confuses her even more, wondering when the two men have talked to each other. Pregnant for the third time, Sarah tells Marie to refrain from singing. Marie tells her that she wants to go outside with Don and when Sarah tells her she can't, she rudely talks back to her, making Sarah put her on timeout. Meanwhile, Chris learns from Amy that Don was lying about Steve and Sarah, realizing that it's just a made-up story. When he asks Amy what she thinks really happened to Sarah, she says that she imagines her sister happily living somewhere, but Amy admits that sometimes, she thinks her father has done something to her. Amy mentions that one time, her father hit her mother, and Irene was in the hospital for two days. After learning about Don's lie, Irene confronts her husband, asking him why he lied to Chris. He arrogantly tells her that it doesn't make any difference if he lies to some lowlife like him, who's been sneaking around with Sarah. Unable to control herself, Amy asks him if he did something to Sarah, but Don says that all he's ever done is to provide for them. Irene is fed up at this point, and she tells her husband that she will hire a private investigator and that she doesn't care what he'll say. Irene storms off, and when Don follows her, Amy notices the keys he left on the sofa. She takes them and goes down to the basement where, just in the bomb shelter behind the bookshelf, her sister is going into labor. As Amy searches the basement, Don shows up and asks for his keys back before angrily sending her away. For the third time, Sarah gives birth, and when Don arrives and asks for the child's name, she says they're calling him Thomas. Sarah gives Don a massage, and as she does, she suggests that he should take Thomas upstairs since there isn't enough room for the three of them down there. She tries sweet-talking her father, convincing him that if Thomas stays with them up there, she'll have more time to take care of Don. Realizing that Sarah is okay, Don leaves Thomas on their porch with a note from Sarah, saying that she hopes she'll take care of her son, Thomas. As Irene lifts the baby, she doesn't notice that there's a smaller note in the bassinet. She calls Don, who pretends to be clueless, and tells him that the baby is Sarah's. As Irene takes Thomas inside, Don finds the note and reads it. He goes to the basement and tells Sarah that he's found her message that's supposed to inform her mother that she's being held captive in the basement. Don throws the small piece of paper on her face and orders her to wear her red dress, saying she still hasn't learned anything. After 14 years in the basement, Sarah is pregnant once more. One day, Marie decides to wear makeup, and when Sarah sees the way Don is looking at her daughter, she tells him to stay away from her. Just to get back at her, Don turns off the power as he leaves. With no ventilation system, Marie struggles to breathe, so they have to stay near the vent. Feeling sad, Marie tells Sarah that she doesn't have any friends, and she's worried that she might not meet anyone, not even a nice boy. Sarah assures Marie that she will and that she's working on it. Out of the blue, Marie asks Sarah how she met her dad. Sarah then confesses to Marie that she's known Marie's father almost her whole life, and Marie tells her to get a divorce once they get out of the basement. In her 17th year in captivity, Sarah gets pregnant once again. In their house, Irene tells Thomas how much she misses Sarah. Thomas wants to know what Sarah is like, and Irene tells him that his mother is magnificent. In the bomb shelter, Sarah takes advantage of the leaking water caused by the rain and tries to dig through the ceiling using a spoon. She's able to dig a hole deep enough to reach a sewer. She then flashes a light through it and a man passing by sees it. Unfortunately, the man informs Don about the light, telling him that somebody is sending a signal to someone. Angry, Don goes to the basement and beats Sarah, with Marie and her youngest son Michael watching. When Don leaves, Sarah bleeds and goes into labor. Sadly, the baby dies, leaving Don to take the body and bury it. On the 18th year, Marie and Michael get impatient and tell Don that they want to get out. Don, however, says that it depends on their mother if she learns to behave herself. Once Don is gone, Marie and Michael take their frustration on their mother, blaming her for why they're still trapped there. Sarah tries to reason that she's just trying to protect them, but the two continue screaming, still demanding to go outside. By then, Sarah loses it, and she starts breaking their things while her children watch. The woman breaks down and lies on the floor, left with nothing but memories of better days with Chris and the life robbed from her by her own father. The kids feel guilty, so Michael and Marie clean up her mess, then apologize to her. Mumbling to herself, Sarah mentions Amy, and when the kids ask who Amy is, she admits that she hasn't been completely honest with them. She starts telling them her story, saying she used to live upstairs with her sister, Amy. Sarah says she had a mom and a dad, but she didn't get along with her father. She continues her story, explaining how Don tricked her into getting in the basement before locking her in there. As Marie and Michael understand who Don really is, Marie starts to have an asthma attack. While Marie is having an episode, Michael asks Sarah what's wrong with them, and she firmly asserts that nothing's wrong with them, that it's always been Don who's at fault. Year 19 comes, and Don comes to the basement with little supplies for Sarah and her kids. Sarah protests about how they are already rationing their supplies, but Don only insults her, making Michael angry. He yells at Don, demanding him not to talk to his mother that way, but Don taunts his son and mocks him about how there's nothing he can do. Without thinking, he attacks Don, but the boy barely even hurt him. When Sarah is finally able to control him, Don turns off the power and leaves. Life goes on for the Cody's. Don gets fired from work, so he and Irene are beginning to argue frequently about money. Sarah tries her best to make her children happy in the cramped basement that's all they've ever known while trying to find a way for them to get help. One night, Don attaches a tube from her car's exhaust to the vent leading to the basement. He closes the garage door and starts his car, making all the smoke go directly to the basement. As Don sits in his car, Thomas shows up, and he is forced to turn the engine off. 
He then goes to the basement to check if Sarah and her kids are okay, and he's relieved to see that they are. During their 20th year of captivity, Sarah's daughter gets a severe asthma attack and can barely even breathe. When Don finally arrives, Sarah begs him to take them to the hospital. Don refuses at first, but Sarah is finally able to persuade him. They leave Michael in the basement, and in the hospital, the doctor tells Sarah and Don that Marie is in critical condition. While the doctor talks to Don about Marie's medical history, Sarah stays quiet, just staring at the clock the whole time. While Don is looking away, Sarah spills water on Marie's medical paper, forcing Don to leave and get another one. Sarah seizes the opportunity to ask for help from the doctor, finally leading to Don's arrest. When Marie wakes up, Sarah tells her that they're finally free. Back at home, the police are able to rescue Michael from the basement. The three siblings are finally reunited, and as Sarah, Amy, and Irene watch them from the porch, Chris suddenly shows up. Sarah and Chris catch up, and as they talk, Chris apologizes to her for believing Don's story and not looking for her. Sarah, however, tells him that she's never stopped thinking about him for 20 years. Chris gives Sarah a new helmet, which he was supposed to give to her the day he talked to Don. After 20 long years, the two of them finally go for a ride once more. Smash the like button. Like you smash your mama's ass. Comment your reaction and don't be a bummer. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.